Hi, I'm Clay Souza. I'm a wedding portrait photographer in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, and you're watching Clay Souza Official. So we are on YouTube every Monday and Wednesday uh, at 8.08 p.m. Eastern Time to talk about the three pillars of an amazing photography. Those three pillars are lighting, composition, and posing. Posing goes hand in hand with directing. Uh, and tonight we're talking about the eight tips to get you, to keep you booked in 2022. So we talk about marketing, we talk about photography techniques, we go live shooting. There's a lot of stuff happening there. So Clay Souza, uh, youtube.com slash Clay Souza official. And we also have our channel on Instagram where you post daily content. On Instagram, we are at Clay Souza official. Would you love for us to see you following us on Instagram and join us in our lives over here? All right, cool. Um, all right, so let's talk about how to get you guys booked in 2022. There's a lot happening right now. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of uh, social media, website, and all of this. So there's a lot of information out there right now that we need to start streaming this information. We need to start, you know, being conscious of what we, we are publishing and when and where, that type of stuff. Okay? One of the first things that I want to tell you is this. Um, social media. Either you like it or not, you need to be present on social media, guys. There's no way around it. Everybody's on social media. If your target are older folks, then Facebook is your social media. If your target are, are younger folks, Instagram is a media. And if your target is high school seniors, your social media is Facebook and Instagram. Instagram because the kids are on Instagram. And the parents are on, 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 on Facebook. So what you want to do is to have a solid portfolio on Instagram and connect with the parents on, YouTube, on, on, on Facebook. That's what's going to work for you because that's where people are. And I know it is a lot of work. I know you're going to tell, but I don't have time. Well, that's just the way it is. Um, last night I worked at 2, 3 in the morning, Okay. Why? Because I was here on YouTube, I was on Instagram, I was on Facebook, I was doing all kinds of stuff. And this morning, I was up 7 o'clock in the morning working. So I've been working since 7 o'clock, and tonight's going to be a night, going to go at 1 or 2 in the morning again, because there's a lot of stuff to be done. Unfortunately, that's where your clients are, all right? So the first tip that I need to give you is this, social media. Make sure that... Um, Make sure that when I talk about when I talk social media, I'm not talking about you going there once a week and posting one thing. You get to post every single day. And on social media, it's interesting because what you need to do over there is pretty much um, to look at how oh, my life has ended on Instagram. That's weird. Uh, so what you need to do is to... On, 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 on social media, you need to offer something to your client. Today, everybody's posting images. There's a, like an overload of images on, on social media. You need to go the extra step. You need to do more than that. You need to, to give your client something that they take away. Just think about people behavior. Why you are here every week with me is because I give you good content. If I was just over here, you know, give you a bunch of bologna, you do not come back. And today, social media, that's what it is. You, you, you come back because of content and you, you, and you need to treat your clients just like that. So you need to put good content there. Now, write down those tips. If you want to get into weddings, okay, here are the things that you can post on social media besides your portfolio, besides photos, besides all of that, okay? Uh, you need to do three tips on how to find a wedding DJ. Five tips on how to, to find the best wedding dress, the wedding dress of your dreams. You can go online and search for this thing and Choose and pick parts of blogs here and there and create your own article and put your own spin into it and then um, and then post on your social media. Okay? Let's say if, you, if you're a high school senior, if, you're, if your niche is high school senior, you can go and say, 
Here are the three best locations for high school senior photos on this area. Whatever this area is, the area where you where you uh, uh, um, where you work. Okay. So three, three, three. The, the three best locations to take high school senior photos uh, on this area, on that area, depend where you work. All right. So that's for high school seniors. So if you're doing portraits, that that works for both of them, high school senior and portraits. What's the tendency uh, uh, of fashion tendency for 2022? Or what you should wear for your fall pictures in 2022. The, this type of content, guys, this is what connects people. This goes in your feed, okay? These are ideas for you to post more than pictures. You get keep posting pictures there, but at some point, keep pictures get boring. Like every day when you post a different picture, it gets boring. So you need to study a little bit more social media because that is a huge source of referral. Now we're getting weddings from social media. We're getting... This year, I think you got like one wedding from Instagram, okay? And last year, you got a, a three or four weddings from Instagram, from people who saw our pictures, saw the content that we put there, and then uh, contacted us. Now, there's another thing with social media. You want something that's called a call to action in every single post that you post, okay? So just don't, don't give the information. Ask for something back. And this is for your own help because Instagram, at least Instagram, it likes that uh, uh, connectivity. It likes the interaction. You have to have that interaction on Instagram. Okay. So on Instagram, what you want to do is something is happening to my internet. I don't know. I keep I keep getting this pop up here, my phone all over about connection connection issues. Uh, no. So on live. So what you want to do at the end of each post is create a call to action. A call to action is a way for people to interact with you. All right. So let's say um, here are the three tips on what to wear for your photo shoot for your family shoot on the fall. And you go and you you. You post that, you, you can do the carousel, a carousel that you know people like. Instagram likes that because it keeps people in your post longer. They read, 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 and also write a good description. Write a good description also. And at the end of the at the end of a carousel, your last slide should be: hey, did you like this post? Save it for later. Did you like this post? Share this post with a friend. Okay. And on your, on your uh, description, you should say at the, at the bottom, another call to action. Hey, did you like this post? Save it. Did you like this post? Share it with a friend. Or you can say, hey, let me know in the comments if you have another idea that I didn't mention. Or let me know in the comments what are your fashion tips for 2022. You can do this with any niche that you have, high school, senior, portraits, uh, and weddings, because that is what will create interaction get what get it's going to get people to to reply to you to get back to you and and it creates that interaction that you uh, when instagram starts seeing that people are connecting with you that people are saving your content that people are uh writing comments to your content um it starts showing your content for more people to more people okay it starts showing your content to more people then you're going to get more views and more people are going to start following you. But it's not only stop putting just pictures there. Start creating content that's helpful to your user because this is going to pay off. Social media, guys, unfortunately, social media is a marathon. It's not a sprint. It's a long-term game. Okay? And if you ever thought about buying followers, Please, I beg you, do not do that. Don't buy followers to make you to have like 5,000, 10,000 followers because those followers, doesn't, they don't mean anything. That's just a number that you have there and they don't interact with you because they're not going to buy your product. These are followers from all over the world. They're not going to buy your product. Besides, Instagram is pretty good about detecting that and they're going to shadow ban you if they don't close your account. 
So if they shadow ban you, meaning they're going to stop showing your content. And that's it. Let me tell you a, 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 a quick story that happened to us. Every time, every time that somebody, um, um, it, it, this isn't in the new profile, Clay Sue's official, right? Every time somebody followed us, we were thanking them back, say, hey, thank you for following. If you have any questions, let me know. If that was a standard text that we would put, you just like copy and paste it to everybody, right? So we kind of control how many people we're getting like every day to see if our start strategy was working well. And then we start doing this, like following like everybody. Every, you follow us, I'll send you a text back. Many of you probably got that text. Hey, thanks for the follow. If you have any question, blah, 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 blah. And watch the same text to everybody. We're getting, at some point, we're getting any, something between 10 and 15 new followers a day. Suddenly, one day, zero followers on that day. Two days, no followers. Three days, no followers. I said, uh-oh, what happened? And then I start going into my, my insights on my post, and I'm seeing Instagram is not delivering my post. I have, like, I post something, and it's like, reach 20 people. Reach 50 people. I mean, 50 people on Instagram is nothing. It's nothing. Of like what's happening? Then we stop doing it. I said that's the only thing that's that may be happening that they thinking because we kept repeating the same message over and over and over again. Instagram was thinking we were a robot or something like a bot that was just like you know generating message and you're gaining all of those followers. So they stopped showing our content for about about a week and a half. I didn't post. I, I, I mean, not a week and a half. I didn't post, but. We stopped replying, sent, sent text back when people followed us. We, I got off on Instagram. I wasn't. I, I spent like two days. I, I went like two or three days, like going to Instagram once a day or twice a day. I spent like two days without posting. Now, only now, this has been like three weeks, I guess. Only now we see the 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 the, the followers coming back to the usual number that it used to be. You got to be very careful with that. All right. Same thing when you co comment on some somebody's uh, on somebody's post. If you want to help, when you comment, is you just like putting reactions. Reactions is not considered interaction. Okay, reactions are not considered interaction. If you go there and just say put a heart, Instagram does that doesn't mean anything to Instagram. To create interaction, you need four words or more, more than four words. Okay, when you co commenting. That's how it works. And same thing when you comment to somebody. If you want to help with interaction, Instagram will only recognize as interaction if you have four words or more. Okay? So tip number one is actually, there was a long one, step up your social media game. And Instagram is the way to go. Okay? So another thing. So uh, Kira, uh, Kara is saying family seniors low at first, but until I got more aggressive with advertising sports in April. Nice, 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 nice. All right. So tip number two, face-to-face -face meetings. Here I go again. If you don't like people, if you don't like meeting to people, meeting people, you're gonna have a hard time in the industry. I'm sorry, but you will. It's fine to do things over the phone, but at some point you need to meet face to face. Why? Because people buy from people who they know, from people who they like, and from people who they trust. On emails, nobody's going to know, like, and trust you. You need to make them know, like, and trust you. If they already called you, you have a very, very, very warm lead. It's not a cold lead anymore. It's a very warm lead, and you have to take care of that lead. Bring them to a face-to-face -face consultation. The, the, the minimum you can do, get them on the phone. And when you talk to them, on, when you ask for the phone, don't ask them to call you because they're not going to call. Ask them. Actually, don't ask them if you can call. You tell them, what time can I call you? Or, or an email, what time can I call you? What time can I call you? Which day and time can I call you? Be aggressive. Be in the front of the conversation. Don't wait for them to call you because they're not going to call you okay so and if you this is if you can get if you cannot get a face-to-face -face consultation but if you can get into a face-to-face -face consultation and, 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 and treat that consultation as a two-way street 
you being interviewed as much as you are interviewing also, especially my wedding folks here. If you look at that bride, if that bride is going to look like she's going to be a bride zeal on you, she will be a bride zeal on you. If she's starting for, if she's asking for a lot of stuff before signing contract, a lot of stuff that not willing to do, but you bending backwards to get that wedding. Guess what? It's going to be a pain in the butt on the wedding day, and even worse, it's going to be even harder after the wedding. It's going to be like crazy. So don't go for that. If you, if your gut feelings tell you something about their bride, believe me. Go with your gut feeling and get out of the situation because sometimes you get to manage this five, six, seven months after the wedding, and that is not fun at all. All right. So tip number two: face to face. Have figured out a way to have face to face consultations, especially if you're starting right now. Face to face consultations. Tip number three: reply to your inquiries quickly. Go ahead and reply. You got in quite reply right away. Don't wait one, two, three days. We all keep saying this market is saturated. This market is saturated. Do you think they contact only you? They did not. They did not contact only you. They contact a bunch of photographers. And guess what? Who's going to get the gig? Whoever replies first. So you got to be the first one to reply. Got an inquiry? Reply. Got an inquiry? Inquiry? Reply. And when you reply, ask this simple question. How did you find about me? How did you find me? Because that's going to tell you where they find you. And if you put advertising money, that's your measurement to see if your advertising is working. Okay? So, uh, quick story. We used to, do, to, to have listings on Wedding Wire and The Knot, both of them. One thing that we did this year, we turned off Wedding Wire. Because we are getting we are getting a lot of uh, a lot of leads from wedding wire, but we're not getting closing. I mean, we're not closing weddings from wedding wire. We are getting leads. We talk to a lot of people, but no closing. And at some point, I think I priced myself out of the wedding wire range, um, and that was it. So I always ask people, "How did you find me?" Must must frequently answer Google. Google, Google. So I shut down Wedding Wire, put my money on Google, more Google advertising for me. Okay? Because I know that Google is bringing me some, something. Wedding Wire is not bringing me anything. I still have a list with the knot that I'm going to try this year. And if it doesn't work, I'm shutting that down too. Because those are expensive listings. And if they don't bring you clients, there's no, no point. So that's, that's why you should ask, how did you find me? How did you find me? Okay, maybe it was through a venue, maybe it was through a friend. And if it is through a friend, send that friend a gift card. Thank you for the referral. Appreciate it. Here's a, here's a little thing for me a gift card, a little gift, something that just to say thank you. Okay, to keep those connections alive, alive and warm. Okay, so number three, the, the tip number three was reply quickly. Tip number four this is more for when you have the face to face consultation or when you have the phone consultation. Shut up. Stop talking. Start listening. It's not about your photography. It's about the relationship that you're creating. It's about the experience that you're providing. And if you keep talking, you're not listening. There is no way, there is no way that you can talk and listen at the same time. That nobody can do that. It's impossible. I have a technique that I do when people interrupt me. When I'm talking, people interrupt me, I stop talking. I just stop talking. I stop in the middle of the sentence, middle of the word. I just stop talking. So I'm talking here. I, I let them finish. And I pick up where I left or where I stopped. Because it doesn't matter to me because I'm talking. And the same way I act when people are talking, I just listen to them. I just listen to them. Okay? I just listen to them. So listen to your clients. Listen more than if you find yourself talking too much, is something wrong. Ask questions, let them answer, and be interested in what they say because you're going to wrap that conversation at the end with what they told you. You learn a lot about people if you just. Uh, listen. 
okay? So stop talking, all right? Listen more and listen with ears that you can, you know, take something out of the conversation. Remember when you, when you start dating? It's not like about like you're just like, ah, oh, you can talk all night. I will listen to you. It's the same idea. It's the same idea. Ask a question and let them talk. When when you do our uh, um, IPS session, for instance, after wedding, right? We do IPS here, so they come here. One of the first questions that I ask them after the wedding: How was the honeymoon, guys? I'm so excited here. Tell me everything. I want to know everything about the honeymoon. And I, I'm quiet, and they talk and talk and talk and talk. I'm quiet. I'm interacting. I'm, I'm you know, sometimes say, oh this, this, and sometimes I say, oh how about that, and then I go back where we were. But I let them talk. People like talking about themselves. Most people like. Um, this creates connection. Look them in the eye. They're going to see they're interested in them. This is great because uh, I remember like one of the brides that booked us a, a wedding a few years back. And she said this in studio with me. Actually, she wrote this in a review from us uh, because she booked us at the bridal show, the forever bridal show. And the, the review that she wrote, she said, she said something like, not with these words, but something like, "You went there. I went there on Saturday. I was pretty much sold, but I want to bring my fiance to meet Clay and Danny because they were so welcoming, and they never tried to sell me anything. They never mentioned their work. They were really interested in our story. They were really interested in both of us." That's why I brought my fiance to meet him because he really wanted to know about us. It was very genuine, right? I mean, I honestly get goosebumps when I talk about this because this is exactly what it was. Bridal shows, I don't sell bridal shows. I talk to people. I I, I have a great time on bridal shows because I'm just there talking to people. And you guys know I like to talk, right? <laughs> so... Listen more when you're doing your consultations, when you talk to your clients. Do you guys have any questions? If you have any questions, I'm monitoring the, the, the comments here. If you have any questions, just let me know, and we are going to answer them. All right? Number five, I'm browsing through this because I don't want, I said I'm going to go half an hour. It's already like 40 minutes. So show value. Stop selling photography. Put this in your mind, guys. This is something that uh, we need to, to work on this you selling memories you are selling moments that's not going to happen again ever and this has a huge value if you shoot a high school senior this is a moment a transition in their lives you capture that moment that's not going to go back again it's not going to happen again this is the value that you need to communicate to your client if you're getting clients to talk to you and you're not booking I bet you the problem is because you're trying to sell the photography instead of selling value, instead of selling the experience, instead of selling memories, because that's what we do. We are storytellers. We are memory creators. That's what we are. And you need to start pounding that key, pounding that key, pounding that key until you get through your client. Before you do that, you need to get through it. You need to stop looking at your work as you're selling photography. You are selling memories. You're selling a valuable thing that people will not get again anywhere. Think about a wedding day, guys. And what I'm telling you here right now, I tell my brides, think about a wedding day. Flower is great. Music is great. Food is great. But it's all gone after the wedding. The wedding day is over. This is all gone. What stays with you forever? Photography. The answer is photography. That's why they need to put a lot of money in photography because this is what they're going to take with them forever. Because after six months, 30% of the memories are erased. Science, not me saying this is science. 30% of the memory is gone 30% of the memory of that day is gone in six months. Now imagine one year, five years, 10 years. What do they have? A wedding album that you create to them, for them. Okay? So you start selling uh, value. Stop looking at your photography um, as you sell in photography. But this only works if you believe in it. 
If you don't believe in it, it's not going to work. If you don't believe in it, nobody's going to believe. You can say 1,000 times with different words, it's not going to happen. Guys, uh, live is on YouTube tonight. After tonight, live's, live is always on YouTube. I'm talking to my Instagram folks here, okay? YouTube.com slash Clay Souza Official. YouTube.com slash Clay Souza Official. We're live over there. There's a bunch of people over there We're waiting for you over there. Just go to youtube.com, Clay Suze Official, okay? From now on, live is always on YouTube. All right? So start selling value. Stop selling photography. If you don't believe in that, work in your head first. See the value of your photography. Then you're going to start talking to your clients this way, okay? Another thing, number six, almost there. Testimonials. It's spring... Uh, What did I say? Spring? What do you want to say? <laughs> I only get by with this because I'm a foreigner. Sprinkle. A word I was looking for is sprinkle. I said spring. Sprinkle testimonials all across your website. If you have testimonial, sprinkle them all across. In each page, you should have one testimonial on each page. Okay? On the bottom of each page, put a testimonial there in the name of the person who gave you the testimonial. All right? This is this validates your work. People read those things, believe it or not. But people read reviews, people read those things. Same thing with reviews online. When when I go to buy something at Amazon.com, for instance, first thing I do, I go where? I look at the product and I think this is interesting. I go to to one and two start. I don't I don't care about four and five reviews because four and five are happy people. I go into the one and two start and start reading them. When I read them, I'm looking for patterns, all right? I buy this product and say, uh, because it, Amazon is funny, because people say, oh, give one star and say, oh, the box came broken. I mean, that's not the product. It's the get rate UPS or whoever delivered the, the, the product, right? So I go through those and start looking for patterns. If there's the same thing over and over, the same problem over and over, I know it's a problem. But if there's like the problems are here and there all over, all over the place, it's not a problem. Same thing with photography, right? Ask people to give you reviews on Google. What do you want to review? Google, Google, Google. The more you use Google, the better ranking you're going to get, okay? And sprinkle those testimonials with the person's name all across your website, one on each page. And if you have a lot of them, create a testimonial pages. Create a testimonial page and put it in there. And if you go to my website, photosbyclay.com, you're going to see there's a testimonial link there where I have a bunch of them. I actually need to update those because we have more testimonials to put in there. All right? Number seven, make connections. This is great. Make connections. In which connections I'm talking about? I'm to not talking about, especially for my, for my fashion photographers here. I'm not talking about the model that contact you. Yeah, let's collaborate and have and she has like 1,000 followers. No, that's not a connection. There's nothing there for you. Start asking this question. What is in it for me? What is in it for me? And what is in it for me? You, you want to shoot with me? You have 1,000 followers? No, you're going to pay a session fee because 1,000 followers not only bring me any client. Period. You're not... If you are on business in, in business in photography, you're not charity. If you want to do charity, go to the cancer hospital and photograph kids. That's charity. You photograph and not getting paid. Stop this nonsense of photography model for free. You're not getting anything out of it. Now you have 10,000 followers. Then yeah, let's talk. Then I'm going to shoot you for free. Other than that, no. Because the moment that you go over there and you shoot people for free. You, this means like, like people are not going to give you anything back. It means that you're not valuing your photography. If I'm going to grab my camera and get out of my house, I'm doing either a favor for a friend or I'm making money. That's it. If I'm going to shoot for my portfolio, I'm going to pay that model. And if I pay them cash, I don't give them photos. There are two ways to pay models. Here you go. This is a little parenthesis. It's not... It's not, not in here, but there you go. Two ways to pay models. And be upfront with them and, and talk about this. Two ways to pay. Images or money. 
Both of them know. If you give them images and you give them money, you pay twice. You all went out there, you put your skill to work, you added the image and you gave them image for free. What's the value? If you pay, if you give them money besides the picture, you're not valuing your work. And this needs to be set up front to the model. Say, hey, I want to shoot with you, blah, 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 but this is how it works. Or if she, if she came to you, fine. If you decide to photograph them, fine. But this is how it works. You get either paying cash or, phot or photos. And put a number or five images, three images, however you want to give. Stop this nonsense to paint twice. I mean, that doesn't work that way. Do you get paid twice in your job? I don't. Do you? No. And last but not least, probably the most important tip of all. Education. Invest in your education. You need to keep studying. You need to keep learning. You need to keep current with what's happening. Photographers, I don't know if other professions have this, and and I, I and I'm, I'm not excluding myself of this comment that I'm going to make, uh, because sometimes a lot of stuff feels like I'm pointing the finger at you. No, I, I, a lot of stuff I'm talking about because I do them right. Um, photographers are notorious for buying a book, not reading it, and thinking that they know what's in that book, right? Or buying a book. Reading it and never practice. Oh, I know this. I read the book. Guess what? Doesn't work. It doesn't work that way. We need to invest in education. You need to practice. How do you practice? You're going to hire models to practice because once you hire them, once you pay them, fifty dollars. You know, fifty dollars that shoot for two hours. You can go there. You have no obligation to give them anything because you paid them already, and you can come up there with one image. If you want, okay, but invest on in your education and practice, mm -hmm. because guys, there's always something to be learned. Always something to be learned, right? We go, Danny and I go to two wedding conferences a year. Last year, I mean, COVID messed everything up, but we try to go to two every year, and every year I'm learning something. This year we have coming up in April. I'll show the fast, 19 and 20 of April. I'm going to be a speaker. Happy dance. Happy dance. I'm going to be teaching three classes at Shoda Fest this year in St. Louis, Missouri. If you don't know what it is, ShodaFest.com. Amazing, amazing, amazing conference. Okay? So, guys, uh, just a second. My folks here on, on, on Instagram, live tonight on YouTube. YouTube.com slash Clay Souza Official. From now on, every live is on YouTube, guys. Please head over there. We're getting to a good point here. So, youtube.com slash official and subscribe and hit that bell button. You get notified of our future lives. All right. So, education. There's plenty of workshops out there. You have WPPI, you have imaging, you have PPA, PPA have local uh, workshops. We have uh, Shorter Fest. There's plenty of stuff happening out there. Get out of your bubble and get education because we tend to keep repeating the same things over and over and over again because it's safe to us. It happens to all of us. Okay, it happens to all of us. All right. So uh invest in your education. Alex, my brother, you are on Instagram. Go to YouTube. Live is on YouTube, Alex. YouTube.com Clay Souza official. So invest in your education. Make sure that you're going to workshop. Make sure that you're reading stuff. Make sure you're practicing. Making sure uh, sure you are practicing your techniques, guys. Stop. There's no sense of thinking that. And I tell you this because I am the same way. I, I read something. Oh, I got this. And then when I get there to shoot, I'm like, mm, how do you go again? How do you do that? Or I try to do it. It doesn't work. And I don't know how to debug it. I mean, it happened a few times already. It doesn't happen anymore because now I practice more. All right, so those are the eight tips. Do you think those tips are useful? Do you think they help you? If they think they help you, let me know in the comments here, quick, because I'm going to start giving you ideas on how 
you can get social media to work for you and how to get more people to do your content. All right, let's go, Andrew. Andrew is family. Andrew, are you here still? Let me know, Andrew, if you're here, because if you're not, I'm going to jump you. Um, I look like a wedding. I think Andrew's left. So if Andrew's not here, Andrew is not here, I'm gonna skip her. Nathan, are you here, Nathan? We here with us, Nathan? Celeste, yeah, practice, practice, practice. Simple stuff, right, Celeste? So Nathan, if you're here, I have you as seniors and weddings. Nathan, if you're here, write down in the comments that I'm here. So I know. If you're not, I'm going to skip you. Anthony. Oh, okay. Nathan's here. A Anthony, if you're here, write right there in the comments. Uh, I will. Uh, I I'm here. So I, I can give you some ideas. Uh, Nathan, seniors and weddings, right? So seniors, this here's how you're going to break into the senior market. Go to events, like sport events, and, see, and photograph for free. You know, sit on the side, talk to the coach. Hey, coach, I'm so and so, but blah, 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 introduce yourself and take some pictures for free. All right. Get yourself a shirt with your name. Okay. With your name in it on the back and start shooting for free. Right. We have to do free work, guys. That's the only time you do free work when you're trying to get to break into a niche. All right. So that's number one. Sport events on high schools uh, on high school scene. Find the calendar, go talk to the coach, and give the pictures back to the coach again. And coach, I have got some pictures here. Give me your address. I'm going to give this for you for free. You're going to ask you why are you doing this. It's because this, this is, I want to break into a high school scene. Be honest, and, but talk to them. Otherwise, you're going to look really creepy taking pictures of seniors playing sports. That 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 is not going to end up well. So, talk to them. Okay. Uh, for weddings, what you need to do uh, uh, to bring to weddings, this is a scene for everybody who wants to bring into the wedding, right? What you need to do, you need to be to do style shooting. Here you go. You, style shooting can go as small as you want or as big as you want. Let's start small again. Okay? Small. Um, you're going to find, go to the thrift store, buy a wedding dress, find a dude who has a suit, and that's your couple right there and shoot them, right? Photograph them. I, I need to stop about shooting them. I need to stop talking about to, saying shoot them. No. Uh, uh, I'm going to end up being blocked on social media because I keep saying that. Okay? Uh, <laughs> Andrew's here. I'm here. Okay. So um, go to the thrift store, buy a wedding dress. Those are cheap. Find a dude who has a, a suit and put them together and go out and photograph. Okay? So that you build a portfolio. Then you're going to start putting those, those, those pictures on social media. You don't need to say, oh, so-and-so wedding. Oh, we did this beautiful portrait of this bride and groom. Boom. Right there on social media. When you post on social media, if you don't have a whole lot of portfolio, stop putting like five, six, ten images at one time. No. One image today, another image tomorrow, a different image after tomorrow. One a day. Okay? Because if you post ten images one day, you're going to spend like ten days with no image to post. Okay? So create a story about this. Remember the beginning, the first thing I talk about social media, create a call to action. Hey, do you like those pictures? Hey, when did you get married? Let me know, let me know here in the comments. So this is this is at the end of your post. You write a little description. Let me hear in, in your comments if you're married or not. Let me hear in the let me know here in the comments when did you get married, when you got married, that type of stuff. Let me hear, see how many call to actions I'm giving you guys. Let me know here in the comments. Did you have a good wedding? Did you have a big wedding? Was it a small wedding? All of those type of things is just to create interaction because when you create interaction on social media, Instagram starts showing your posts more and more and more to other people. Get it? It's all about the social media game, guys. All about fooling the, 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 the uh, uh, um, algorithm. So, seniors, Photograph, uh, uh, go to the sidelines, start photographing uh, 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 senior games, talk to the coaches first, ask for permission, don't get kicked out of the field because then that's going to be it. And for weddings, find a couple, 
a cheap dress on a on a, on a, 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 a thrift store, find a dude with, with a suit. Probably the the the, the model they have has a boyfriend or a friend who can help you with this. Put together, create something nice. This is small. If you want to go big, contact flower shops, contact dress shops, contact makeup people, and do like a big production in makeup flower and stuff the payment are the picture the professional pictures that you're creating for them and you're going to give it to them and then you post on instagram and then you tag them all and they tag you and then the whole thing starts that's how no everybody's gonna go yeah this is crazy right this is what you want to do you want to create that craziness on people right so but this is what you do you can even print an album and have that as a sample album i did that on the beginning of my career before i had one wedding i shot i was a shutter fest 2000 and i don't know when 2000 blah 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 i went to shutter fest and i shot the heck out of a couple that i saw there she was in a wedding dress he was in a suit i shot the heck out of them african-american beautiful couple and i created an album and i closed three words with that album guys this is what it is this is what it is but you need to take the steps not going to happen if you don't do anything okay wedding high school seniors we've done portraits portraits model call model call model call all right model call and this is uh done since 2000 2000 2026 oh 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 yeah yeah don't say something here i forgot uh Weddings connect with venues also, right? So if you go big, go to a venue and say, hey, especially a venue had if you find a venue that just opened in your area, they don't have pictures. You're gonna sit get there and say, and you're gonna play the big game. I'm a big guy, I'm doing a favor. Hey guys, you have a beautiful venue here. I'm a photographer and I want to do something for you. I, for, 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 for us, you can say, I want to do something for us. Um I want to bring a bride and groom flower and make couples. So you're going to do a mock-up wedding here. And guess what? I'm going to use your facilities and I'm going to give you one album with those pictures for you to advertise to your brides. There's no venue that's starting right now. They're going to say no to you. And then you follow through your word, right? What's they're going to create? That's going to create a connection with the venue. You're going to be the first vendor on their preferred vendor list. Because, why? Because you gave them something for free. This is what it is. You know, that's called a, 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 a there's a name for that. I don't remember right now, but there's a name for that. All right. So vendors, uh, 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 vendors, uh, 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 venues, okay. Planners, wedding planners. Wedding planners, when you start, is a little bit tricky because they really don't need you. But we connect to the planners to a point that I'll tell you, I can pretty much tell you 30 to 40% of our wedding leads today come from either a venue or a planner. This is free work. I mean, we put the work ahead of time, right? We paid it forward. And now vendors keep sending them to us. Because they have worked together, they like work with us, they like our photography. If they find a couple that's a match, they bring it to us. And guess what? I don't ever remember not booking a wedding that came from, uh, from a planner. Because the planner has a huge... I remember losing wedding because the planner changed and took my couple to another photographer. I remember that, but I don't remember... Um, um, a couple that came from a van, from a vendor, from a venue, or, or a planner that didn't book us, because they, they have they have really, really uh, 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 heavy uh, influence on on the couple. All right. Remember, you guys are work as a team, okay? And at the wedding day, you're gonna do everything that they, they, I mean, you're gonna work with the with the with the planner to draw that timeline to wor work with them so they can like you. They're gonna keep you sending you back weddings. All right. So venue, go there, talk to them, create a big, big production there. It takes time. It is time. I've done this. I've done like a full wedding. I've done like wedding that we had makeup, hair, DJ, planner. I mean, we put a freaking DJ inside a mock-up wedding in a venue. If you look at the pictures, you don't, the only thing that's going to, 
tell you that's not a, a real wedding because there's no guests. Even food, we had even food. Everybody got images. We spent like six hours in the venue. Everybody got pictures. The amount of refers that we get from that shooting is amazing. Okay? It is work. But ain't happening if you don't want. All right. Read that. What is it that? If you want it, work for it. Right? And I showed you this last week. Get shit done. Get shit done here. Okay? So you get seniors, you get weddings, portraits, model call, model call, model call. Hey, Facebook ad. Do a Facebook ad like. Hey, I'm I'm trying new techniques and, and new equipment, and I'm giving um, I'm looking for three different couples who want to be photographed. All you need to do is show up with good energy, and I will spend one hour with me. I will photograph you. I will give you one image, two images, three images, whatever you want. Don't go over three, three images, and that's it. Create that portfolio. Put that on your website. And now you have material for social media and website portfolio, right? Keep doing that. Keep doing that. Keep doing that. At some point, and then what happens is this. Fall come, right? Fall, right? Right now, we already missed Valentine's Day. What's coming up? What's coming up is senior. My senior folks here, you get to act fast to get those seniors' pictures out because you need to get booked. Because, guys, it doesn't happen this way. I'm going to post tomorrow, and a week later, people are going to contact me. It doesn't happen that way. It takes months for people to see, for people to research, find who you are, you know, go to your website, get to know you a little bit, and then uh, uh, um, book you, all right? So right now, you're already running a little bit late for senior, but you still have time. Start getting those seniors out. And right now, you should be thinking about what? Fall already. Fall. Okay? If you have pictures from fall last year, those are the pictures that are going to start working. And now, it starts to start sending. Remember that I talked at the beginning here on social media? Now is the time for my family photographer here. Time to start making those posts. Hey, guys. Fall season is just around the corner. I know it's not summer yet. Because nobody, at least here in North Carolina... A lot of people don't photograph for the summer because it's hot. So it's going to be like spring, then fall. Okay? So now you're going to start talking about now fall. Hey, guys, fall is just around the corner. Have you thought about updating your, your, your family photos? When was the last time you took a wedding photo? I know. The last, the, last, the last photo you took from Susie was when she was two years old. Now she's 13 and you don't have any pictures of her. Well, fall is coming. It's the time to start getting thinking about your pictures. And by the way, here are three great outfits to wear during a photo shoot on a, on a, on a, on a fall. Boom. Gave you an advertising idea right there. You are welcome. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. Let me look at talk look at this comment here. So Nathan say one senior tip that has worked for me, high schools are having senior nights and silent auctions. I donate a shot and usually get another four shot. There you go. I didn't know that. I'm not a senior photographer. I don't know. So read that comment that Nathan said. That's a great idea, Nathan. Thank you. Thank you so much. But what happens? So Nathan has another comment here. I have to try work with vendors again have some bad experience where they loved all the free pics, but still referred to other photographers. Yes. Yes, it happens, Nathan. Uh, it happens. It's just the way it is. But think about this. Because you had one or two or three bad experience doesn't mean everybody's like that, right? You have to keep trying. You have to keep trying. At some point, you're going to find the right person to pair up with you and create a team. Okay? All right. So, guys, anything else? Because I, I I, swear to God, this afternoon I said, I'm not going to go over half hour. It's like 9.15. I just keep talking too much. I'm going to start doing like three tips instead of eight. Three tips because I can't talk in half an hour. All right? Guys, I think that's more than what I had planned to talk about tonight. I gave you, hopefully, I gave you information that you're going to like, information that's going to help you to book uh those clients that you want you're going to keep your agenda 
full this year. Let me know here in the comments if you enjoyed this live. If you enjoyed this, let me know here in the comments. Put in some reactions, some fire reaction, some clapping reaction. Yes. Um, Nathan is going to get some traction there. That's good. Good. That was a really good idea, Nathan. I like it. Um, apparently, nobody liked it because nobody said anything. Did anybody hear? Yeah. People are here. No reaction. Guys, thank you so very much for your time. Thank you for your patience. We're still working the software, the ins and outs of the software. This is only getting better. My, I had a really good plan for tonight that didn't work, but we're going to keep um, putting our, our, our head in the right place, and then we will uh, get back here next week. And by the way, on YouTube now, if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button and also the bell button so you get notified every time we go live. And from now on, guys, every live is going to be on YouTube, okay? Every live is going to be on YouTube from now on, all right? Thank you so much. I truly appreciate you guys staying here with me this long. Amazing. Uh, and you guys have a great night, and I'll see you on Monday. By the way, there's some good things coming up soon in March. Stay tuned. There's some really good things coming up in March. Okay? Around the middle of March. With some surprises. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Have a great night.